After a heated race in Liga 3, Union de Tomar managed to snag the Liga 3 trophy and with it, automatic promotion into Liga Portugal 2, Portugal's second tier of football. It was considered an overachievement by the press, but with our players and staff, especially free transfer signing Rafa Pinto, we made it possible. But now that we're here, the competition is going to be fiercer than ever. And you better get started. Liga Portugal 2 has 18 teams in total. They play each other twice. The top two teams get automatically promoted, while third place plays a two-legged promotion relegation playoff against the 16th place team on the first tier. And if you're in the bottom three spots, well, 16th means you play a Liga 3 team in a two-legged playoff, while 17th and 18th get you relegated back to Liga 3. Given our financial situation, I'm doing just about everything in my power to avoid relegation. Personally, I'm aiming for one of the higher place finishes, if not a promotion spot outright. Especially since two of the teams in this tier can't go up to Liga Portugal, as they are Benfica and Porto's B teams. Speaking of B teams, we got one of those two now. They will be playing at the lower district levels to start, but it will be a good place to start developing some of our players who are too old for the U19 levels, but not quite good enough to get into the senior team. Although, if we're going to aim for promotion, then we do have to improve the roster with players that can play well at the second tier of Portuguese football. Four to six weeks later. I may or may not have gone overboard by bringing in quite a lot of signings during this offseason? I really don't understand it! They all will play a role in our campaign this season, but personally, Luis Balbo Vieira, Aristide Juan, Guilherme Mantuan, Thiago Ferreira, and Thiago Gonçalves are the key signings out of this absolute spread of players. While guys from last season like Mika and Rafa Pinto earned contract extensions, some wouldn't quite make the cut as Antonio Baixinho is sold for nearly 4k to FC Inhulets in the Ukraine, Ricardo Caeiro is bought for nearly 5k by Podhale, and Herivando Banora is sent out on loan to Inter de Escaldes. All those moves were made just prior to Union de Tomar getting their first phase draw in the Allianz Cup against Union de Sportiva de Leiria. Right, this kind of blindsided me too. But the Allianz Cup is just a fancy sponsored name for the Taça da Liga, aka the Portuguese League Cup. It was established in the 2007-08 season as an official competition for all clubs in the top two tiers of Portuguese football. Its format has teams play through one-legged ties in the first and second rounds, while the third phase becomes a group format of three teams and four groups, where the group winners then advance to the semi-finals and final, which are a one-legged fixture played in the neutral ground. They also have this one rule about two U21 Portuguese guys having to be on the starting lineup for each game too. Won't somebody please think of the children? But unlike many other League Cups in Europe, there is no European qualification spot that's automatically earned by claiming this bad boy. <laughs> Still, it doesn't stop us from taking down Leiria 3-1 to advance to the second phase because as a club trying to rise through the ranks, we're going to need all the capital we can get. That win led to us getting Tondela in the second phase and oh by the way, these games are all happening in between preseason friendlies for Liga Portugal 2. No big deal, as we stomped out Tondela with a 3-0 win to punch our way into the third phase of the cup. After that match, friendlies are then wrapped up and we can now fully focus on our Liga Portugal 2 debut. Rafa Pinto proceeds to shine with a brace against Mafia in our Liga Portugal 2 debut as a solid 3-0 win is achieved and that debut sets the tone for the rest of the month. As we manage a comeback victory against Feirense, get a 2-0 clean sheet against Penafiel, and new signings Aristide 1 and Thiago Ferreira score late in the second half to help us drive over Belenenses to wrap up the month in third place. I also couldn't help myself as I ended up signing more free transfer players, such as Kosovan center Lombard Delova to slot in as a starter at the position, and Australian forward Archie Goodwin because, well, Let's just say I have a feeling about this guy. Our old Liga 3 friends in Caldas are up to start September, and hey, look at that! Archie Goodwin is already scoring a goal on his debut. That's five straight victories for us in the league. 
Our second round matchup for the Taça de Portugal was then announced against Luletando shortly after. While we can only get a draw against Torriense to follow those past wins, we're still in a comfortable spot in the standing. I guess it's a good thing we got Thiago Gonçalves after all. Also, here's another free agency signing in Brian Ferreira, and I swear this is it on you people coming into the club. For now. It's a good thing we got him because in the second round of the Taça de Portugal, Luletano actually pushed us to extra time, and Ferreira was one of the two men to score in extra time to ensure we didn't end up being on the receiving end of a giant sling like we've been doing the past two seasons in this tournament. Fellow Liga Portugal 2 side Feijense would be next in the Taça de Portugal, but we go from one cup to another as our first match in the third phase of the Allianz Cup against Boa Vista came along. We got sorted in a group with them and Braga, both clubs in Liga Portugal above us. Boa Vista would provide a good test to see how close we are to our goal of making it up to their level, and that game turned out to be a... Hold on, let me check my notes here. A 5-2 thrashing by us against the mid-table Liga Portugal side. What is this? But the wins had to stop at some point, and Nacional de Madeira made sure of that. October would be a mixed bag, as the league saw us defeat Leiria thanks to an Archie Goodwin brace, but then fall short against Passos de Ferreira not long after that. Goodwin also brought along some of that magic to the Allianz Cup, as he scored two late-game goals and rolled us to a draw against Braga, a result that would eventually put us in the semi-finals of the competition. With that in mind, the highlight of the month came after a KG Taça de Portugal third-round bout versus Ferreira where no scoring of any kind happened until the extra halves, and we dragged this whole thing to penalties where cupkeeper Nuno Silva did just enough to get a key save, and the boys didn't miss a single PK in order to will us to the fourth round. That would mean it'd be another Liga Portugal side in Vitória de Guimarães against us in the Taça. Archie Goodwin proceeds to celebrate the news by scoring four goals in a 6-2 win against AVS, but our next game around... Tondela finally took their revenge for the past two times we've kicked their butts in cup competitions, as we lost 2-1 to them. Not exactly the best result to have before going into the fourth round of the Taça de Portugal against the Liga Portugal side. Okay, this somehow just made that worse. And you can tell when the opposing side opens up scoring as Vitória de Guimarães did with a Juan Roman Zarza goal. A few minutes later. Turns out we just needed to bullshit our way into getting penalty kicks late in the second half, and that was enough to get Winion de Tomar into the fifth round. We then wrap up November with a win over Alverca SCAD before getting Nacional de Madeira in the draw for the fifth round of the Taça de Portugal, so we're at least avoiding the big three. Or rather, two of the big three, as Benfica got eliminated by Sporting CP in the previous round. How do we follow a fairly successful two months? Well, losing to Vizela by conceding a really dumb penalty, having to rescue a draw against Porto's B team, and not even a convincing win over Desportivo Chaves is enough to wash the stink of conceding a 99th minute stoppage time goal to Benfica's B team, and then finding out we're getting their senior team in the Allianz Cup semi-finals. Flashback to the future! Let's talk about other parts of January instead, like our draws against Académico de Viseu e Belenenses, or how we beat up Nacional da Madeira in the fifth round of the Taça de Portugal and are now getting Moirenense for the quarterfinals, or also how we trash Feirense and Mafra with clean sheets and plenty of goals before the aforementioned Benfica game I dare not speak of. And how we beat up on Penafiel too, even though that one also led to some gruesome injuries in its aftermath. Hey look, we're in third place. Not bad, right? Here's a couple more signings like defensive midfielder Wali Aldin Hadir, fullback Abubakar Abdullahi, and center back Chukwebuka Anthony, just before the transfer deadline. We also sold Gi for £325, so we at least needed to fill one of the missing spots there. Our Taça de Portugal quarterfinal against Moireirense did see its fair share of action as we carried it into extra time, but giving up two goals in the second half of extra time, including the Lucas Ambrosio game winner, well, that's going to sink anyone's hopes and dreams. Still, 
a respectable set of appearances in both cups that now have come to an end. And thus, the focus now shifted in full towards Liga Portugal 2 and its 13 games left on the schedule. A 3-0 loss to Torriense is an ideal, and neither is a Guilherme Mantuan injury. But we bounced back by beating Caldas 5-2 and then pulling off another win against Nacional da Madeira. Speaking of pulling things... We have got to figure out why everyone keeps pulling their ligaments this year. While the medical staff works overtime on that throughout March, we deal with a 3-1 loss to Leiria, lose our starting striker and top goal scorer for the next 5-6 weeks, but somehow levy that into a 3-2 comeback against Passos de Ferreira, a boring 0-0 draw against AVS, and as I realize we're the team with the most injuries across the league, well, Dondela takes advantage of that to beat us 3-1. On the bright side, Union de Tomar is holding on the third place, but Vizela, Desportivo Chaves, and the aforementioned Tondela are on our heels. So drawing 2-2 against Alverca to start April isn't quite giving us the leeway to fend off some of those challengers, but beating Vizela 2-1 most certainly will do that. The race for the top three spots in the league is only getting tighter, as seven clubs in total have their puncher's chances at it, with four games left to go in the season. A draw against Porto's B team and then a loss to Desportivo Chaves are not stellar, but those losses don't hurt us as much somehow due to results elsewhere going in our favor. Realizing what a golden opportunity we have within the final two games of the season, Union de Tomar does find a way to beat Benfica's B team to set up a showdown against Académico de Viseu on the final day of the season. At this point, Nacional da Madeira has already secured the title, with Vizel and Tomar having the second and third place spots respectively. But Vizela is a point behind us and if they beat Porto's B team, they can pass either us or Vizel for one of the promotion spots. So yeah, this last game of the season has a whole lot on the line and then some. That game started off on the worst possible note for Union de Tomar as after the first 20 or so minutes, they're down 3-1 and the visitors were giving them everything they could possibly handle. After a rather intense talk during halftime, the boys seemed to get it together as Wally Aldin Hadir and Jamil Richter scored within 6 minutes of one another to make it a 3-3 tie. But after that, not a whole lot is going on here. That is until the 96th minute where it's none other than Liga Portugal 2's leading scorer, adding one more to the column and winning this game at the death for Union de Tomar. The final week's games end up having us in third place, which would normally mean having to play a two-legged series against the 16th place in Liga Portugal. Except, not really. Because in second place in Liga Portugal 2's is Benfica's B team which cannot gain promotion. Thus, the second automatic promotion spot falls to third place, and guess what boys, we are headed to Liga Portugal next season. Much like the Liga 3's title race, this one was a bit on the butt clenching hours during the last few weeks, but what can I say that hasn't already been said about Archie Goodwin this season. An absolute rising star in the Portuguese tiers, with 24 total goals and 20 goals in Liga Portugal 2. He was the clear choice for young player of the season by breaking the club record for most goals in a season outright. Even if it is an overachievement, Union de Tomar will finally return to the top tier of Portuguese football for the first time since the 1975-76 season. After seeing our efforts throughout the past three years and the influx of money we're bound to have going forward, the board of directors made the decision to approve plans and secure a loan along with stadium sponsorships for the construction of the brand new Estadio Unión de Tomar. Lackluster name aside, it will be ready by the end of next season. So it's up to us to do everything in our power to stay up top in Liga Portugal and with it, greet our fans with a brand new stadium at the top level. Until then, I should check my inbox. Last I saw, there was quite a few emails where... Huh, would you look at that? Garbage. <laughs>